In this segment, we're gonna introduce the ideas behind BERT so that we can understand what's going on inside that model and how it's trained. Uh, and then further on down the road, we'll look at all the things that it can do. So the basic history is that ELMO came out in the spring of 2018, uh, and then a follow-up called GPT, which was more or less a sort of transformer-based version of some similar ideas, came out that summer. And when BERT came out, it had several major changes compared to ELMO. One was using transformers, and, but the main kind of critical one that informs how we think about what these models are doing is using a different type of training objective called masked language modeling instead of the normal language modeling training objective that ELMO used. So we'll talk about some of these other differences uh, later. But for now, let's talk about this idea of masked language modeling and see why we might want to do it. So in ELMO and also GPT, we have a unidirectional model. So if we think about encoding this sentence and trying to get good vector representations or contextualized vector representations of the words in it, the way that we would understand the word Copeland is by having ELMO run in each direction and taking the representations from those LSTMs at the time step corresponding to Copeland. And so maybe you know, the, the, the forward ELMO should tell us that Copeland is a ballet dancer, and the backward ELMO should tell us that Copeland is a performer, right? And so the, these pieces of information are then stapled together into a single vector, but they're not deeply merged, right? Like we're just concatenating these two independent views of what's going on in the rest of the sentence. BERT is going to do something different, where it's going to be able to look at the whole sentence and produce a vector that ideally captures both of these aspects. So how do we learn this model that's so-called deeply bidirectional? Um, so one thing we've said was that BERT, compared to ELMO, replaces LSTMs with transformers. And so transformers allow us to look at the context more broadly with the self-attention mechanism. And so maybe we can just train a language model and use transformers instead of LSTMs, and then we'd be done. So what happens if we do that? So it turns out that this does not work. And the reason it doesn't work is because in language modeling, you're always thinking about predicting the next word based on the current word. And so you have to be very careful to set up your model so that it doesn't look at the next word if you're feeding all this stuff in as a batch, right? Um, I mean, ELMO is set up so that every prediction going on here, even though it's all one neural network, only looks at the past in order to predict the, the next word. Um, and that's correct. But here, if we just naively threw transformers at this, um, you know, this prediction of Madagascar, for example, can be informed by self-attention from visited looking at the next word here. Um, so what I'll say is that GPT uses a one-sided transformer, which only looks at, uh, the, which only looks back at the past here. Um, and so there are ways to fix this, uh, but that doesn't solve the problem of how we integrate information from both the past and the future in order to inform the representation of the current word. All right, so that's where masked language modeling comes in. What we do in masked language modeling is we say, all right, we're going to take a chunk of text, and rather than try to predict every word based on what came before, instead we're gonna say, let's just forget some of the words. Let's replace them with mask tokens. And then we're gonna try to predict the words that fill, the, that fill in those mask tokens. And we're gonna do this not to every word, because if we replaced everything with masks, there would be nothing to predict from, but roughly 15% of the words we're gonna to try to predict based on the context. And this is gonna allow the model to then look at everything, but not cheat, right? Because it has no way of seeing Madagascar um, if just this, this mask token is in the input and Madagascar is not in the input at all. All right, so, this is the one of the fundamental ideas behind BERT and a lot of the other models that have followed on it. So what they do is they have a input that consists of uh, a couple of different sections here. It starts off with this CLS token. We'll talk about the function of that later. And then it starts with one chunk of text 
a separator token, and then another chunk of text. And these two chunks of text might be from, let's say, contiguous paragraphs on Wikipedia. Uh, and in this case, we mask out 15% you know, of our tokens and predict words based on the masks. Okay, so why is this in red here, and why is it start, suddenly start talking about Madonna? So 50% of the time, what they do is they take two paragraphs that are not contiguous on Wikipedia uh, or whatever corpus they're training from, and they ram these together. And then what they want to do is they want to use this CLS embedding to predict whether this second chunk is the true continuation of the first chunk or not. So the idea behind this was twofold. One was to try to get even more non-local reasoning in this model by saying, all right, like I want this, I want this model to have to really think about the interactions between these two chunks in order to understand whether these are continuations of each other or not. And so the, the, then that prediction gets localized at the CLS token, and the CLS token can attend everywhere, right? So kind of where it shows up is, is not necessarily so important. But the fact is we have this one token in our uh, model that we're saying is going to be useful for making this classification decision that looks at the entire input. And that's something that we're going to want to do. We're going to see in a future segment how BERT is applied. And we're going to understand that that CLS token is usually what people use in order to aggregate information about the whole context. So the overall BERT objective combines this masked language modeling and this next sentence prediction. Now, it turns out in some future work that the next sentence prediction part is not so important, but I think this gives you the intuition for how we're going to get the model to look at all this context, understand these tokens in this deeply bidirectional fashion where to figure out Madagascar, you want to look at everything that came before and after it, um, and then how that's going to be the foundation of our how we build classifiers that live on top of BERT. That's the end of this segment.